Hey guys, wanted to make a tutorial on how to install SFML 2.1 on code blocks. So the first thing that you're going to need uh, is SFML 2.1. I want to do this for the current version because there's a lot of tutorials and instructions on how to install 2.0, but 2.1 is a little bit more up to date. Um, and I mean, it's been a while since I've seen a good video uh, tutorial on how to install these things, and I could not find one. Um, it took me a very long time to install this and get it working properly with all the features that I wanted. So I thought I'd do a service and record how to do it. So first of all, you're going to want to go to download uh, on SFML's website. I'll provide this link in the description. Click SFML 2.1 and we're going to install the mini GW for code blocks. So this is what you click download on. I've already done this uh, a few times, so we're going to show in the finder or in the folder. Sorry, thinking OS X here. Um, you're going to need to install code blocks. We provide this link as well. Go to downloads. Um, you go to binaries. Then you install the one with MiniGW, um, the setup.exe. So this one right here. Click Burl OS, which will throw you to SourceForge. Uh, anyway, so you can click either one. Uh, that'll start the download for that. You click through that. That's a really easy code blocks. is a really easy install. You just click through that. Accept, accept, accept. Next, next, next. Don't need to worry about anything. There's nothing particular that you need to worry about in this install. Um, then you need MiniGW as well. Um, so SFML is done. It's downloading right now. You grab this folder and drop it into the root of C. So go to your C drive and just drag and drop and you can see I've already done that. And so this is where your SFML folder sits. Once you've done that, you can install MiniGW or you can do it alongside. So go to downloads up here at the top, click the download manager, exe. This is fine. Take a second. I've already got it installed. So I don't need to worry about that. There's a particular step in here that you need to watch out for. So you click run. Yes. Next. Next. Download latest. This is going to open command prompt. I'm not going to show you that part, but it opens the command prompt and takes a while. On a slow connection, I imagine it would take longer. Except at the root of C, or the drive that you're going to be using. This should all be at the same drive that you're using, the base the root of that drive. So these are the root of C, SML 2.1 and mini GW. Next, next, make sure to install the C++ compiler. You need this or none of this will work. Um, I'm not going to click next because that's where the command prompt is going to come up. Uh, I'm not sure what's after the screen. Click next, next, finish, whatever, um, and the command prompt. Do not X out this command prompt that shows up. Um, I've already got mine installed, so I don't need to worry about it. So this is my MinGW folder. All right, so SFML is on my root of C. MinGW is installed, and the code blocks with SFML is already installed. I already installed it and showed you where that was. So again, the one with the MinGW setup.exe. Not the user setup, but this one. Now this is for current versions, 12.11, 2.1 on SFML, and I'm not sure what MinGW, oh no, it's a 4.7.2. Okay. So now that you've got all of these things installed, you're going to want to start up code blocks. Start up code blocks. Perfect. Create a new project empty project, next, wherever you want. I'm installing it to the how-to so I can show you guys. Not going to matter. Next. These are all fine. Make sure it's GC++. File, new. Oh, one thing that I need to mention, uh, and you might need to uninstall and reinstall code blocks when you're doing this. It asks for a default compiler when you're starting up. Make sure you're using the C++. It should 
um, to show up and ask you what compiler you want to use. And it'll show you what compilers are on the machine, uh, but you need to select C++, uh, the GNU compiler. All right. So now that we've got this project going, it's in a folder. You click File, Add New, Empty File. And I need to name this file. So this is going to be main.cpp because it is a C++. I'm going to select both debug and release versions. It's fine. If at any point you need to pause this video and go back because we go pretty quick. Build options. Now, these are really important uh, because this is the main thing that I got hung up on uh, when I was installing. So on the website for SML, they tell you uh, all about the stuff that you need to be able to include here in order to run anything. So we go to resources, 2.1, MinGW. They tell you that you need to do these things. So this is really important that you do it in both debug and release. You need to do these steps in both debug and release, or else this will not work. I guess you could do it at uh, the top here, but I'm paranoid like that and just put it everywhere. So for the compiler uh, in search directories, you're going to need to add. And then remember, we install it at the root of C. So C colon backslash sfml dash 2.1 slash include. Now this will only work if you spell it correctly, um, but you can also just click through it like that. And then you're just going to go to the computer, C, sfml, and we're looking for lib for this linker. Lib, OK. Uh, I say no. I never do relative pathing. I just let it do C blah blah blah. So exactly like that. Absolute pathing. Now that both of these are in, you're going to copy them to, you got to select it, copy to. I copy it to the top and I copy it to the release version as well. You can do, you could write it in in all of them. Uh, but I just like copying it, it's fine. And so I need to copy this to release, copy this to how to. Fine, you don't need to click OK, you just double click until the window closes. Um, and then you'll notice that it's in fact in every location. So it's good. The compiler is in every location, you want to double check that, whatever. The linker settings are pretty important. Uh, you need these in order to um, link your project to your libraries. So I can show you what that is. If you're curious, if you dig through SFML, find this library folder. And this is exactly where it's pulling from. Uh, these are these .a files. So SFML-graphics, I use static libraries uh, because it compiles into the exe. So you'll notice, and this will work for you guys as long as you follow the tutorial uh, exactly as I'm doing it here. You go to the library. Now you'll notice that I'm at the root of how to, and this actually matters for if you're in debug or release. So now you need to go to release or debug, whichever one you're going to be doing first. For the release, you need to do the uh, ones that you're going to be adding. So SFML. I'm going to show you the basic tutorial first graphics. That's good, but I need S because I'm using static. Add another SFML window dash static, just an S. Then again, SFML dash system dash S for static. Now, I typically copy all of these to the how to just because. Uh, for some reason, it's not using release or debug. Should jump to there. I'm not sure. I'm OCD about that. Debug. Now we need the debug versions of SFML. So SFML dash graphics. It says it says right there. Dash static dash debug. So that's what the S and the D are for. SFML dash window dash static dash debug. Then finally, sfml dash system dash static dash debug. All right, and then when you switch them, it'll ask you to make sure. Now I just switch in between because if I made any spelling errors, it's easy to see when I switch. Uh, but it doesn't look like I did that, so that's good. 
You don't need to copy this anywhere. Debug has its own thing. You're going to need linker options, and I'll provide these in the description. This is important because if you want to use any of the standard libraries um, and compile and be able to run your EXEs standalone, you're going to need this. So I'll provide these in the description below. So I'm going to click OK on that. Open up my sources here. Property, build options, linker settings, and I have all these. You don't need, you don't need that. So I'm not going to include that. If you want to include it, you're going to have to type it. Um, just click OK. I'm going to X out. It's fine. You want to save changes? Yes, that's fine. You go back into the project. You guys won't need to do this because you're just going to copy and paste the code. So back to build properties. And now I'm back here. So I'm going to put this in every single one. Linker options. Yes. Debug. Yes, at least yes, and click OK, and then that's that. Uh, one more thing that we need to do in build options uh, is specify that we're actually going to be doing static. So there's, I would like to say, a little asterisk uh, if you're going to be doing sound with this, and I'll show you how to fix that for sound. Uh, we do need to define this as SFML underscore static. So SFML underscore Pretty sure it's capital. Yes, yeah, so static. Okay, perfect. So now that works. Okay, that's that. Um, one more thing, this will not work for you yet. You need to go to settings, compiler. Remember how we installed MiniGW? There was a purpose to that. Even though this comes with MiniGW on it, it is not the current version of MiniGW. So, where we installed it is the root of C slash MinGW. You can go through the dot 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 and click on it, click OK. Um, so you need to change this to the MinGW folder that we installed to, which should ex look exactly like this. All right, click OK. Now we're good. Now we're ready to go. So we can copy and paste, copy, paste. We should be able to build and run the debug version. There we go. It works. Perfect. I can get that on my first try. The release version will also work. If it doesn't, chances are you missed something. Um, so this all works. Yay. Now there are two more things that I need to show you um, that are fairly important. If you want to be using string, um, that's tdio.h or winchar.h, you're going to need this. I will include this in the description. Uh, I ran into this problem. I wanted to use uh, two string to convert something so I could output frame rates or whatever else for debugging. Um, so you'll download this. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's going to have these things in it. Pretty straightforward drag and drop type patch stuff. Um, it's a well-known bug that MinGW has, so I wouldn't worry about this. MinGW. You need to open that folder. Yeah, whatever. Okay. So, what you're going to need to do from here, is, as it explains, Go inside of the appropriate directory, so MinGW, uh, and write. So include. So we go to include under here. And then we're going to go to the include folder. We're going to drag these two. Drag drop. Move and replace, move and replace. That's fine. Then we're also going to go to um, this really long path. And since we did it correctly, now this is, don't try to copy this and put it in because we have four point. 7.2, and this might even change soon, uh, after I make this tutorial. So it's going to be under MinGW lib. Don't don't just click MinGW32. It's under lib lib GCC MinGW32 that, and then we're going to go to include C++. Um, from C++, we go to Min32 bits. And we go 
we need this one, as it says right here. Drag, drop, replace. It's a little bit smaller than the one that's there. That might freak some people out when they're copying it. Don't worry. Um, this one's just more up to date as far as not being bugged. All right, so we're done with that. Things now patched. All right, sorry, I had to attend to something. So once you've placed those folder or the files into the correct places, you're ready to go with string uh, and all of these fun things that you can use. Yay. Um, oh, important thing about audio that I will not skip. You need to include these into the um, the root of where your project is. So, if I go grab these, they're going to be in the C drive, as a multiple point one. Um, they should be under bin. Yep. So, as they say, this file, lib SMD file one open a L thirty two DLL. Both of these DLLs. Copy them. Put them in here, right where your project is. Perfect. So now, this will work. Now you're going to need to include some extra libraries if you want to do that. So, I will show you that real quick, what that looks like. Just the little project that I'm working on. So obviously you're going to need to include blah blah blah. You should already know how to do that stuff. That's, that's really easy. Uh, it's just a setup that might be a bit confusing. So I'm going to go to projects um, and show you what you're going to need. See how I included audio, network, graphic, window system. In the other one, I only include graphic, window system. Uh, this is to show that audio works. Um, and you're going to need your audio file alongside it. So nice music.ogg. So I'm loading it. Um, and when I play and run, build and run, it'll run the file. It should be pretty loud. Runs perfectly. Terminated. We're good. That's how you do it. Um, and that's why you would need to include the DLLs in the correct place. Notice how it has the DLL right there and right there. And that's going to need, be needed to build these. Also, um, if you build everything correctly, you'll notice that these will work. Oh. All right. You must not have built the release version. The debug version should work. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. So. All right, so you saw that it didn't work when I clicked on the exe. Um, I just took a quick minute there to figure out why. Um, and it turns out it's because I didn't have the files that I needed in there. So you saw it through an error saying I need to open uh, al32.dll uh, in there. And even if I run it and it has both of those, it crashes. Now why? Why is that? Because I don't have the resources in there. So you need the resources and the files that you're going to be using. So these are the resources that I have for this particular project. I need all, except not the build files, and I need the text file, the type font. So if I copy those, paste them in here, yeah, yeah, I know, I already have them. This will now run. Perfect. Runs. Not sure why it runs the debug window still. Uh, probably something to do with this. Um, I can figure that out later. I might post something and how to remove that window. But uh, that's basically how you do it. So you can push this into your debug as well. Um, your build and run should still work for both debug and release. Not a big deal. Uh, I hope this tutorial was helpful. If I left anything out, let me know. Um, and otherwise, uh, it was pretty comprehensive. So, I hope you enjoyed.